welcome to Live with Greg or Live with Greg, depending on semantics. <laughs> Is there going to be like cool intro music before this and everything? You're asking me if it's a professional podcast? No, no, no. I just wondering if there's going to be like some cool music. Like, you know, like you got to get like a good intro for this. Oh, no. Do I? I don't know. Have you seen my podcast? Not this one. I've, seen, I've heard of Moped Outlaws. I was just listening to it. Yeah? Oh, really? Yeah. What do you think? I like it. It's a good one. I was engaged. I was listening to the episode with, what's his name, Ronald? Oh yes, that, that one. Was silly. Yes, that <laughs> one. I, I was enjoying that one. That was a good one. <laughs> it was so funny. He like had such a, a itinerary. Like he really oh, yeah. wanted to get something. I know. Like, and he kept on asking y'all questions back. And I was like, I mean, this is like a you know, it's like a good give and take. I guess you know, whatever. We're going with it. <laughs> yeah, he was a funny one. Yeah, that, that was, was fun. Yeah. I do think we do well when we have a guest. But I love Mark, so yeah, I think we have a good repertoire. Yeah, right? y'all do good together yeah. too. It's a good banter. For yeah, sure, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I made that opening. Hmm? I made that opening for Moped Outlaws. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's a good opening. I was listening, I was like, can I just be on Apple Music or something? Spotify, wherever it's at? Yeah. Yeah, I was rocking with it. All right, thanks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course. All right, so this is our soft opening. We're here with another episode of Live With Greg, and I'm here with Jacob. Hey, everybody. I'm Jacob, as you just said. You are Jacob. It's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Happy to be here. Fucking <laughs> early in the morning. Yeah, I, I made us go bright and early, crack of dawn. But yeah, you know, on a Saturday, no less. Yeah, I'm an asshole. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm, okay, let's start with that. Let's start with that. <laughs> no, like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to admit that I'm like a great asshole. Right, so, what does that mean to you? Um, you know, I think a good, like, the best way to describe like being an asshole is like being just enough of a dick. So, like. You say, like, shitty comments, this and that, throw them out there, and, like, they're funny, but, like, they're not, like, so out there where people are just, like, shut up, you know? It's a good in-between. Do you think the people that you're hanging with kind of set the tone for your edge? I think they can help with that because they give me good stuff to play off of. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, if you were a month, like, if, is your, any of your grandparents alive? Um, one of them, but like, you don't have a relationship with that. No, person. not like that. Like she has dementia, so like, uh, there's yeah. I can't, I can't really do a push and pull there, you know. It's right. just like, a, oh, what's going on? So, yeah. <laughs> so no, not with the grandparents, but like you know, there'll be a difference if like I'm in a room with like a bunch of monks or something. I can't be like an asshole there. Right. But like, your son, for example. <laughs> <laughs> so easy to be an asshole with it. <laughs> so uh, it works yeah. that's cool yeah right <laughs> do you think there's any element of that promoting a vibe in you that's like a negative thing mm-hmm. that you know you find yourself in your 40s and that's grown into something that you really didn't want I've worried about that for sure do you? <laughs> I mean like sometimes like I mean I'm like, I just turned 20 so like I'm thinking about it, I'm like I'm two decades into this shit. So where am I going to go with it in that sense? Right, right. If I keep on going this way, by 40, will it be cool? And I, I don't know, but, like, I just keep on telling myself, like, with life in general, like, I'm not a very traditional person in that sense. Like, I grew up in, like, a very like, Jewish household and stuff. I didn't get bar mitzvah. Like, I refused. I, I, I like the Jewish religion, to be clear. But <laughs> no hate. <laughs> but I just don't want to practice it like that. I've known since like a young age, like I'd rather like a free spirit with that. My parents don't like tattoos. My family doesn't. Here I am, like almost ten now. You know, like it's like it's those kind of things. Where well, I'm, like, you have tattoos, and that's not very Jewish. No, like, I can't be buried. But like you I can't be buried. No, I'm in like buried. a Jewish cemetery. No, they, they don't want me to burn either. But like. What am I supposed to do now? You know, you just have locked out from those pearly gates, I guess. But <laughs> put you in a glass jar. Maybe if that's what they like. I don't know. Do Jews have pearly gates? Oh, I don't know. See, I'm not a good Jew. I don't know. I don't think they do. I didn't know about Hanukkah and like Shabbat, and that's kind of it. I'm like a really bad Jew. I'm so so you know about the holiday where you get presents. Well, I like presents. And you yeah. know the weekly. Mm-hmm. No, like, see, this is like the asshole thing I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm, that's that's what I know about Judaism in that sense. But I thought with the tattoo thing, like my first tattoo was like a Jewish tattoo. It's a hump that everybody see. So I thought that would like win me some points at least. A Jewish tattoo, sort of like that, doesn't exist, right? 
Well, not unless you're talking about World War Two. Um, yeah, but see, I thought I'd like upcycle that idea, make it a bit more positive, put a good spin on it. <laughs> <laughs> so is that from the um, Kabbalah? See, for this, I mean, it's the Hamsa, and it's, it's in a lot of different religions and cultures, and it's, you know, warding off evil, the evil eye. But for me, I have my own story with it, where I was eight, my parents took me to Israel for their 10-year anniversary since they met there. And I was at, like, a flea market and found this, like, little Hamsa, and I really liked it. Um, and I brought it everywhere with me, I made, like, this whole thing in my head about it, but then I lost it on the plane back. So I found a replica online, bought that one lost it at least like 20 times in my high school experience but I'd always find it even if I lost it like in the city or like I just didn't know where it was it would come back to me somehow so I thought I'd get it as a tattoo so I never lose it it's a good look charm so that's pretty smart yeah I'm, I'm kind of like innovative like that all right so you ever talked to with your parents about the whole Israeli Palestine thing <laughs> I try to well see because like I don't my parents are very pro-Israel on it, which is like, that's that, you know, that's their prerogative, they're Israeli citizens, so like, I get it, like, you know, like, there's like a bias there. In my opinion, I just think it's like, both sides kind of throw their own daggers and darts, you know what I mean? But I don't know. I'm not educated enough to make like, a very st solid stance on it, you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Mm -hmm. But from what I know, it seems like um, the Israeli government political system, like, that's apartheid going on. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I think I think when I like say that, it's more of like a long term thing. So I feel like in the grand scheme of things, it's been a bit of a push and pull of like both ways attacking each other. But as of late, Israel needs to step up. <laughs> like, yeah, like just honestly, when I grew up, I was a Zionist for sure. The right. whole six day war, I was just like, wow, these guys are awesome. Right. But now, the past 10, 15 years, I've been like, oh. Are they that awesome? Like, I don't know. That's not even a question for me anymore. Like, <laughs> just there's so many reports of the Palestinian families, you know, being just ripped out of their homes. Which is and, disgusting, yeah. honestly. And no, nobody deserves to be treated like that right. for any reason. Right. Um, and yeah. And it does seem like overall the vibe is the people just want to live in peace yeah for the most part and you have these sort of elite and government factions that are creating chaos agreed and, and i think that the governments in general are focused too much on territories and like this is holy land and i understand the history of it to that extent of like why like that land is important to them however i think it's time that we adapt our mindsets into thinking you know land doesn't equate holiness inner peace and love and spreading that is holiness and anywhere can be holy land if you provide it with it. What's your holy land? Oh, shit, I don't know. Even from a psychological perspective? From a psychological perspective? Yeah. I mean, for me, it used to be here, like Marin, because like, I, felt, I felt very comfortable here, so like, I always felt good here. And when I moved away, I was very like homesick all the time. Like, I always wanted to live in L.A. ever since I was a kid. Um, but I, did, I found myself hating it because this was my holy land. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I wanted to come back to it. But I've learned that I don't need a holy land. My holy land is me. Wherever I am, like, I can make a home. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like that's what like Israel needs to do. <laughs> oh, so what is your holy land? Like you just said, mm. my holy land is me. Yeah. So if, if you it's, roll into that. It's what I make myself comfortable with. So it, my holy land can be the people I'm around. If like, you know, I really care for them. Um, music. I'm a musician. So, you know, like when I'm writing or creating music or performing, like I find comfort there. Um, in writing. Just being creative in general. Giving myself that like outlet to like express but also be comfortable with it in myself so music what kind of music do you like creating that's what I've been trying to figure out because I think I like to experiment with a lot of different things I started producing like a few years ago and in that I really liked making like dance stuff or like poppy more kind of stuff with, like a lot of synth and 80s stuff but when I'm like writing without that I make like very like acoustic like alternative maybe rock maybe pop tracks um and i've released one song um, on burn. spotify yeah on all streaming platforms burn you can check it out if you guys would like um what would you release it under i released under my name just jacob and Shmuel. okay um but i feel like i should get a stage name i don't know i just don't know what it would be because i feel pretty good in my own name as it is yeah. but i don't know if jacob and Shmuel is the most catchy name but does that matter jacob the mensch that's something 
That's something. <laughs> the mensch. The mensch. It has a ring to it. Am I a mensch? Yeah. No? I think so. From what I know of you. Well then, there, it fits. Let's do it. Right. <laughs> Next song will be under Jacob. Mensch. Then. Yeah. Or, or just menchy, maybe, or something like menchie. that. Menchy. Yeah. It has a ring to it. I like yeah. it. <laughs> So catch me on Spotify under Menchie. Um, <laughs> stream whatever I release next. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know what I want to like do with like specific kind of like genre of music. I don't even know if I want to put myself under specific genre just yet. I might just like start releasing whatever I make and see what resonates most with people and then go with that. That's kind of like um, shit. I just spaced out his name. The guy who did you know I'm a loser, baby. So like, come on, damn it. Loser, Getting old baby. and vultures. Um, Jonah. God. Bullshit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm not quite sure, to be honest. If Jonah gets out the shower, we can I'm getting him. old. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is going away. <laughs> Should we talk about that now? No, no. <laughs> sure, what? <laughs> talk about what? <laughs> oh, come yeah. on. Uh, kind of like... I mean, all artists do it. You know. I mean, that's what I'm, but, I guess I'm going to do. Artists, there are artists who are able to put out just a broad range of music. Right. Like Beck. Was that who that's that? what I was there trying to think of. Wow. God. That was a full circle moment, wasn't that it? That is so <laughs> to that. Yeah, cheers to that. You know what? Yeah. Oh, that's so sad to me. I was, the, a T was stuck in my head. Yeah. It's just it, fucking But weird. there was no T there. That's the crazy yeah. part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, really, just Beck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Beck does do that, and I and I think like some artists do have that ability, but a lot of bases like or like fan bases just like you know, stick to like a generic one thing. But I don't know. We'll see where where the road takes me. I'm pretty open to whatever my career lets me do. Are you familiar with Wing? W E N. They're they're like that. Yeah, I'll yeah. Have to check them out then. Yeah, they they put out a country album. They they were alternative and had a good underground following. Interesting. And then they put out a country album. They went to Nashville and hired up. Like damn, them, and these silly songs. They did know. the whole Nashville thing too. Like they went full yeah. country with it. Full country. That's yeah. crazy. But they had songs like "Pissing Up a Rope" and, mm. um, you know, a little, yeah. like from what I heard, the these Nashville studio musicians were kind of like um, piss on a rope. Right. Yeah, like what yeah, are we I, doing here? They usually have like whiskey and like trucks. I feel like so that stuff you switch up. <laughs> I just shut off my brain. What did you just say about truck stops? (laughs) (laughs) Well, not quite truck stops, but in a way. (laughs) What did you say? (laughs) How country stars are like used to just hearing about like whiskey and like trucks, like in their trucks, right? And crying in your beer. Yeah, exactly. Or like women, and like Daisy Dukes or something. Right. That's like the whole thing. I feel like. I wonder if there's any like homosexual or lesbian country singers. There is. I'm so glad you asked about that. There is this guy Orville Peck. Who, I'm pretty sure is gay, might be like bisexual or something, but he's got a few albums out, has a huge fan base, always wears a mask, so like you can't fully see his face, but like, you get the vibes. So there is. I'm sure there's a lesbian. And he, and he sings about like his heart being broken by some dude? Well, he's the heartbreaker. Oh. Uh, but yes. Alright. So that's his whole like shtick. So it's kind of like, uh, God, I'm not going to, it's too early for me. I can't do these early things. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's what I'm learning here. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I apologize to the audience, I guess. For this <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question for you. Do you feel any um, discomfort in like the age gap between you and I? Like, Mm-mm. I'm an old man. Not, not, not like, really. I've always like, I feel like I've always like, been finally around like older people. Like I know like, some, like especially growing up like some kids are like, comfortable talking to them and stuff. But for me I've always gone like along with like my friends' parents, for example, or something. And my parents are pretty like chill and open with me, so I've always just been able to have like more of like that kind of relationship with my parents, which I think helps out. So it's never been like So your parents are in your life in a way where you can like they're total support. You oh, can completely. say anything to them. Yeah. Like you know like they, I think that openness is what allowed me to be so comfortable in myself and comfortable with them too is because like I didn't want to bar mitzvah like earlier they didn't they, they were fine with that they understood they don't necessarily like tattoos or they didn't and now I have tattoos and they're more understanding about it or like you know like I smoke weed they, they understand that they, like, they're, they're open to it you know what I mean and, and vice, vice versa you know my parents aren't the most like orthodox or conventional people by like American standards at all so it's just alright so you're 20 yeah how long have you been smoking weed for? Since I turned 18. 
I did it medically at first, and now it's medically and recreational. So, I do both. For back spasm? Yeah, I have, like, super bad neck problems. So, I get really chronic migraines and stuff. Um, but on top of that, I'm trying to think of, like, what else? I have anxiety. So, when the meds weren't working for a bit, I was like, <laughs> let's just smoke some weed. I think that'll help out. And it did. So, it worked. Do you still have anxiety? Not nearly as much. I mean, if I saw anxiety, I would have said no to this. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was a very anxious person. Like, I, I could not walk to school or be out alone in public at all. Like, it was very debilitating. But I worked through it, you know, through years and years of therapy. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's helped a lot. So do you feel comfortable delving into that a bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So what did you find was, like, the root of your anxiety? Oh, that's a good question. I think the root of anxiety was myself, honestly. Like, like I, I am, I'm the creator of it in that sense, and that's what I had to learn is like stop myself before I create that process because I'm just very comfortable with um, negating my feelings, putting myself down, kind of isolating myself. That's my go-to for security in a sense. And so for me, it's just constantly running myself to break out of that shell, say yes instead of no, those kind of things, and and remind myself like. I put a lot of weight and value into how others perceive me. And so I, and, or at least I used to. I wouldn't say I do too much anymore. I think for myself, it's, I, I do this for myself because I myself enjoy it. And if other people have a problem with that, that's their problem. And I just have to remind myself of that. And I think that's been a huge part of my moving forward. So what do you think was at the root of being in that place? Mm. Of yeah. self-deprecation and in essence, being hard on yourself, right? You yeah. Know? I mean, to be honest, I don't know. Like, in the one sense, I can answer that by saying, like, I've always been a perfectionist. And I think my, my, my aim to be, either have myself be perfect or my work be perfect, had, I, I gave myself criticism because of that. And anyway, I started from there. But to be honest, I, all, all I know is ever since I was a little kid, like, I've been anxious in situations where that doesn't even apply. Like, you know, I couldn't go to bed without, like, the lights being on or somebody being in my room. Like I said, you know, I, like, I couldn't, be in public or even in private alone at times. So like I always have to be surrounded by people and like I just have to be busy. So like Lady Gaga says, you were born this way. Yeah, I really was. You came to this planet with that. Yeah, for real. And that's part of my baggage and I just kind of work with it, you know? That's what you have to do. So do you think it's still there but you've yeah. learned the tools to work with it as you say? Yes, do you, yes. Do you think there's a potential of healing it where it's no longer a part of your life? See, again, I don't know, but I, I, I'd, like to I'd like to think that you can heal anxiety like that, and like, it, it could be like a 100% cured thing. At the same time, though, like, humans are creatures of habit, so I feel like it's so easy for us to go back into those like, repetitive cycles, but in my opinion for now, what I believe is that it's going to be a constant in my life that I can constantly work better with, and it's about working with it, not against it. Um, but that's like subject to change. Maybe in like five years, I'll be completely healed and it'll be like a different perspective, but that's where I'm at now with it. Yeah. That's one thing I think of at least, like perspective, like I feel like we're, us as humans also like to be very much like sedentary in our ways, but we're all constantly changing. The only, like, this is not something I've been like stuck on for a while. The only thing that's constant is change. <laughs> so re re if you're going to rely on anything, it should be the fact that you can't rely on anything in that sense. So from a spiritual perspective, mm -hmm. do you have something in your thought process that's like, well, there is a consistent positive X. Like, you know, like, mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying, like, you yeah. can't rely on anything, everything changes, right? Right, right. But there's the potential of despair in that. Mm -hmm. Because, like, yeah. you can't right. rely on anything sort of a negative Right, thing. that could definitely become a negative thing. Right, so do you have an X factor in your process that is, like, a divine infinite, you know? I wish I did, but no. But I also don't look at it as despair. That I think I think at first I did because hearing that's like, Ugh. like what? Because yeah. because like, hey, that's that's gross. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> because like we like like I said like we like to have like things put in place like, we, where people have habits of routine and stuff. You know, that's what like what we're raised on. But I don't see it as despair because in my opinion, like not relying on anything doesn't have to be a bad thing. 
in that sense. Like it's 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 all about outlook. I feel like in that sense because like if the only thing I'm relying on is that things are going to change, well then if I just go with it, there's no problem. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the pandemic happened. None of us really wanted that. That's kind of that's really shitty, isn't it? But like the change that came with it and the growth that comes with it, you just got to move with that. You got to move with whatever you got to do to help yourself and others. So how does will play into that? Like your will, your... How does will play into that? I know, yeah. Interesting. Because like as a creator, yeah, you um, are creating things, right? There's right. an element of will involved yeah. in that. So going with the flow in a passive manner isn't going to create things. No, it won't. I think it'll help guide you, but I don't think it'll help take action. So I think with will in that sense, taking initiative, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think there's change that you can passively go with and then there's change that you can act on. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not sure how to provide an example for that in that sense, but like, yeah, how would you differentiate? How would you differentiate the two? I feel like, for example, let's say like I was like trying to write a song and I was like having super bad writer's block or something. I could passively kind of just like move around and like do other stuff with my day right um and because like you know the day's not stopping i still have things to do so i can just go do that and come back to it later i would say it's like a passive way to approach it but if i want like, to take my will and like i want to do this and like stay sedentary in that i'll ch- i'll change my approach then like oh well maybe if i go to the beach like i'll i'll i'll, I'll liven something up for my writing process or maybe if i like go to this park or talk to this person gets inspiration if I work with this person ask them for advice you know what I mean like go with the change in the moment that's I don't know if that's like a really good example to be honest but that kind of wasn't I don't think the camera's gonna answer no it won't sorry I, I keep on looking at this at the third person I don't know I, I don't even know how I'm supposed to do that but you can do whatever you want there's really no Perfect. rules well then this. there we go <laughs> but okay so you have you had an experience you can think of mm-hmm. where there so you were writing, you were creating mm-hmm. a piece of music, yeah. and it was a grind. Mm-hmm. So, so you do have an example of that? Just two days ago. Okay, so two days ago, it's a fucking grind, right? Yeah. And it's, uh, so and what'd you do? It was mindset for that one and this, because for the last few months I've been having an issue where I'm writing music and I'm like, is it good enough? Like, am I, like, like is, is my output even worth it anymore? Again, you know, there's like a kind of anxiety, self doubt thoughts right, coming right, back, right. and so in this moment that was happening again because like I'm like, oh, there's only like, it's the same chords over and over and this and that. Like, what's going on? I, I needed something different to like liven it up, and so I just gave myself a few minutes where like I didn't like meditate or anything, but I like gave myself like some affirmations and remind myself to get those thoughts out of the way because that's what's blocking me, not anything else. And once I did that, and I, I said, it's okay if you start off with the same two chords over and over again, or it's like the same few words, like, it'll get to somewhere, just let the process take you, or let yourself and the process take you. And I did, and, and eventually it wasn't just two chords, and eventually it wasn't just four words, and you know, it builds on itself. So that's awesome, that's, it yeah. sounds like you've, like that's part of your toolbox you've learned, yeah. is like, alright, take a breath, mm-hmm. kind of sit with these negative thoughts, right? And dis- and dispel them isn't quite the word, but like um, Tell them recognize them. Yeah, yeah. You got because if you don't acknowledge it, you don't know it, and if you don't know it, you can't do anything about it. Do you find like um, I know you and Jonah worked on a piece a couple of days ago? Yeah. Is that the song a couple of days ago? No, or? no, that's a different one. All right. Do you find like again with going with the flow and yeah. will? Mm-hmm. And egos start getting involved, you mm-hmm. know, when you work with other people. Yeah. So how do you? How do you handle with that? that? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like too, because I've been trying to collaborate more with people lately too, because I feel like you can learn so much from other people, which is one of the great things about it. Um, but I think part of that is is learning how to navigate egos with that too, like and and like with. Like Jonah, it's never like that, I think, because we're both able to put that kind of stuff aside really well, and we can both just, like, work off of each other. We're both open to changing it, too, which is a good thing. You know, Jonah's very good at going with the flow, in my opinion, with that kind of stuff, especially in music. Um, So, in that sense, it's easy, but in other times where I've tried to work with people, they have, like, a very set thing in mind, and I might not have something very set in mind, but I I might be stubborn in some of the things I think the song does or doesn't need. Um, And so with that, I have to... 
I can't control what the other person does. If they don't want to handle the ego or like anything else in that process, that's on them. But the way I can contribute is by helping myself do that. Stand up for what I believe in for the song, but also be willing to change those aspects that they want to as well, you know? There is, um, like I just did this process a week or so ago, mm -hmm. working with a group. It was a good experiment. Yeah. But the thing I've noticed in life is a lot of times I'll have a goal. Yeah. And then it isn't happening, it isn't happening. Mm -hmm. And then it happens a different way than I imagined. And there's mm -hmm. a part of me that like doesn't want it because it didn't go my way. Right, exactly. And exactly. it takes me a minute to like, oh, wait a minute. It's the goal I wanted. So The journey is whatever it will, wants to be or whatever it will it to be, you know? To a degree, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Phew. Right. So, um, as a young buck... <laughs> what an old man thing to say. That's a young buck, lad. <laughs> what do you think of the state of the world today? Uh, it's not good. It's not like bad necessarily either. I mean, like we're so we're surprisingly in like the most peaceful time in like, human history, from what I heard. Really? I saw a report about that. I don't know if it's true. It's a nice thing to think about, though. Like because when you think about it, there's a lot of tension like under the surface. But we're all still good enough for now, in that sense. You know what I mean? In terms of, like, the world in general, though, I don't know if it's that good, honestly. What are your thoughts as a, I guess, not as Well, a... I was thinking about this with media. Yeah. Um, that nowadays the way we get information seems is really through social media. And part of the problem with that is, like, any idiot can say anything. Right. It could be and, so fake. <laughs> and there's a whole lot of people that'll just jump on the bus. Mm -hmm. um, whereas before with newspapers and television, you had reporters and their preset, like investigative reporting was right. their job is to like, you know, you say to me, yeah, Whitaker's upscale. Well, I would go to Whitaker. Is it really upscale? You know, yeah. I don't know. You're just basing off of what I told you. What right. You, what, That's what I mean. That, right. Not, who knows? Like, so the state of the world, because there is this thing with um, the whole gun thing that's going on in our mm -hmm. country right now. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty insane. Yeah. 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 And there was um, something about like this kid that just shot the, you know, the July oh, 4th thing. Yeah, in, at the Highland Park. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, no, and um, oh, the one in no, no, that was it. Yes, yeah. Highland Park. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. And something about like how come I forget what it was, but something like you and you know he can't get a he can't go into a bar and get a drink, but he can go into a store and get and get a gun, but not they got like a bunch of guns and the guns. Like, yeah, and but they can't even call guns. They're just yeah. So there does seem to be an element of. Um, chaos like I don't understand mm -hmm. the logic of our leaders that yeah are... yeah I don't know if I quite understand it either I think it comes you know it's a lot of personal gain that's affecting public politics and I think that's like a big problem here on both sides to be clear like yeah. I I'm, I'm a registered like I, I don't I'm, I'm not registered to Democrats or Republicans because like Typically, I'm very, like, liberal-leaning. That's just where I'm at, you know? Um, I'm open to anything, but I'm, I'm very liberal-leaning. But, like, in terms of where I want to vote, it's it's not in either party, because I feel like both parties are fueled by cash and flow and seats in a house as opposed to rights of a person. And so I'll vote where... Not where the money doesn't talk, but I'll vote where people do, you know? So you do vote? Yeah, absolutely. It's so important to vote. Everybody should vote. And what does that mean, you'll vote where people talk but money doesn't? I feel like a lot of things are like initiated or, or only are only talked about when there's like some funding behind it. Like the whole Second Amendment thing is funneled or fueled by the NRA in that sense. Like, of course, the people too. A lot of Americans, most Americans are passionate about that topic because it's a very serious one and it's, it's in our constitution. But like, I feel like the NRA pushes a lot of money into the legislative um, decisions for it 
um, and into just po politicians in general. But then on the other side, I mean, you still see a lot of organizations and stuff funneling it into the other side, which I get is more reactive than active, but either way, like, let's just talk about it. We don't need billions of dollars to make decisions about whether or not we should have guns that have this much effect on people, on lives. So when you say you vote for, like, do you, do you vote for the president? Mm -hmm. So you do. So you pretty much, you're, you participate in voting. I participate whenever I can, yeah. Did you vote this last thing that happened in California? Was it like June? See, I, that, here's where I catch myself. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a politician. Yeah, I vote. I vote. Oh, did you vote this last? No, no. I didn't do that. But to, but to clarify, I was out of state for the entire time. And I didn't realize you could vote online. I thought it was like a mail-in ballot thing only. So that was like on me. But if I knew that I could vote online, I would have done it. Like, <laughs> well, I didn't know you could vote online. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I don't know. Like I just I wish I voted, but I just wasn't aware enough. So that was a good wake up call for me. But everything future and everything before that, I have voted in. <laughs> I you just happened to call out the one time. No, I for real, like I thought this was a setup right now. Like what's going on? <laughs> Cut the cameras now. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Yeah. We're done. I'm walking out. <laughs> yeah, I know another uh, redheaded man who. Yeah, I don't. Uh, <laughs> we suck. I suck. <laughs> you ever get teased about being a ginger? Oh my god, that was my entire childhood. <laughs> what? Maybe that's part of the anxiety. Maybe. No, but I remember, I, well see, I grew up in Santa Fe. Like, I was there until I was 11, in New Mexico. Yeah. And I was one of, like, very few blonde, or strawberry blonde at the time. I wasn't, like, really ginger back then, but the blue eyes, pale skin. So everybody was always like, ah, your complexion, I love it. And, like... I was like, kind of like hot shit. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, this is fine. And then I moved here and everybody's like, haha, ginger, you look like Ed Sheeran. Like, and then I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so I've kind of just like rolled with those since. And at first I hated it. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, well, also because there's this one, there's this one kid in middle school, Matthew. I'm calling you out, Matthew. If you're watching, Matthew, get fucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're the D. Yeah, you're the D. <laughs> like, always call me gingy and like try and make fun of me. And like, it was definitely like, trying to like, bully me. Right. But eventually, I should learn from middle school me. I was on to something. I was just like, whatever. Like, I will take that name of pride. And then my nickname became Gingy amongst all my friends. But it was like my thing. It wasn't right. like I reclaimed it, I guess, you know? So right. after that, it didn't really bug me that much. It's just part of who I am. I have ginger hair. Cool. I'm, 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 I look like a cheering, apparently. Did Matthew, was he part of high school? Like, did you guys ever cross paths? No, no it's just I mean, after, I've, well, see, I kind of like did. I did a bit of a clean sweep with a lot of my friends after middle school because a lot of them wanted to, wanted to say I was social climbing or something like that after, from what I heard. But the truth was, I wasn't happy in any of those friendships because I wasn't being myself and I wasn't pushing myself as much as I wanted to. So I had to like cleanse myself and like find new friends that would push me the way I wanted to be pushed. Awesome. Yeah. So. And now you have that. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been friends with them since. So. And hanging outside. <laughs> Where are you I'm gonna not go gonna with go this one? No, no, no! Please do, please do. <laughs> you guys smoke so fucking much. Man. Yeah, no, I know. I never used to like that too. I think here's here's what I will say. I, I worry that I started that. <laughs> I really do. And I look and like I was just talking to Liam about this like two days ago. Where it's like. They just smoke and play Smash all the time. And I'm like, no, I know. And like, I was like, shit. <laughs> like, let's, like, let's do something. Like, I'm forcing us to go to a flea market tomorrow in Pacifica. Because I'm like, let's, like, I want to get out there. I like to get out there. When I'm in Whittier, I do that more. Because you can't really smoke on campus as much. You know what I mean? But it's fine. I, I, like, I don't want to be that person who just smokes and is, like, sedentary with it. I feel like there's so much potential when you smoke to, like, activate it a bit more. So, like, if I can smoke and, like... Let's go to the beach and do that. Or, like, let's go to the city and just check something out. Like, that's what's more engaging. But you, you're you not going to drive high. Don't do that. <laughs> um, so you got you to set it up appropriately. So I feel like, like, well, there's Uber. Yeah, true. But do we have the money for Uber? No, we're college kids. You're not. Or at least I don't. I don't know. Come on, um, you're Marin County White College. Uh, I, I know, but I want these bitches to do it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we, we do smoke a lot out there. And, you know. I definitely want to cut back on the amount because I think there's a healthy amount and an unhealthy amount. And for me personally, physically and mentally, it's an unhealthy amount. One thing I'll say, because um, at this stage in my life, yeah, 
one, there's friends of mine who are falling off. Right. And so it's like it catches up. Right. And there is like this one, Mark, my partner in Moped Outlaws. Yeah, yeah. He quit about five years ago. Smoking weed? Or? Yeah. Okay. And he loved it. It was like right. something he just loved doing. Right. And um, he he mentioned just a couple weeks ago that he believes the emotional growth he's had in his life the past five years yeah. would not have happened if he was still getting high. I believe it. I do. I think being like, I, I think, you know, it's you build relationships with a lot with everything in that sense like there's a relationship here I have a relationship with caffeine I have a relationship with weed and it's important to build boundaries with those and if, if those boundaries get broken or if you don't have those boundaries set like set in stone it can get really wishy-washy and so for me when I first started smoking in that first year it wasn't the amount I do now um, and I found it to be very beneficial for my for me mentally and physically you know, like I did use it medically at first for mental and physical reasons, but in ways I didn't even expect. Like my, my, my creativity, I, I found a new way to express it. There was, there was just a lot of stuff I wasn't expecting from it. But after a certain point, it kind of just became my comfort. Where, where, the, where being high was being comfortable. And I was comfortable with just being comfortable and nothing else. And that's when I realized I need to reestablish my relationship with it. And I've reestablished my relationship with it enough, but I haven't created those boundaries enough. And that's my next step. Okay, so earlier yeah. you talked about um, going with the flow, yeah, which is really without boundaries in a right. sense. Mm -hmm. So how do you find the balance mm -hmm. of boundary and going with the flow? That's I think my lifelong dilemma, honestly. <laughs> no, for real, because like I, I'm a very much like work hard, play hard person. But that's like my, my my thing. I don't like to like rest at all in that sense, and I constantly burn out because of it. And it's the same thing with like weed, or it's the same thing with all of this. Where like, if I'm into something, I'm super into it, and it's all or nothing. And so I'm constantly trying to find balance with everything in my life because of that. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know with that, but I I think you go with the flow, with um, qualms for yourself. Qualms. Was that the right word to use even? I don't know. You go with the flow with qualms. For, I think qualms is like a doubting, right? Oh, well then no. It's not even at all. Like go with the flow, but like you still have like boundaries for yourself. You still you still have... You like, have your morals and your you, and, laws. And, but, but, but allow them to be subject to change if you want. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. where the go with the flow thing comes in. You can, you can have your values. You, you can be stubborn in, in, in a mindset if you want to. But be stubborn to an extent to where you can be like, okay, well, I'm still open to this and that or something. You know what I mean? You find what works for you at a, at a time, and then you go with that until it doesn't work anymore. All right, so when you're 40, what would you like to where what would you where would like, I like to be? Yeah, what would you like your life to Ooh, look like? That's a good question. See, I used to have this really clear idea in my head as a kid of what I wanted. I've always been like very driven. I want to be like a, like a pop star, and I want to be like produce behind the scenes about the time I'm 40 I'll be having four houses all across the world and I'll be like touring and be a household name I don't really care about that anymore and, I, and, I, and I'm way more open to what my life will be like in 20 years than I would have been 10 years ago um, I would like to be in the music industry I would like to work whether it's as a musician performer songwriter producer manager whatever I want to I want to I want to be a part of that and participate um, I want to be a business owner Maybe have a few businesses, be successful with them, have them help people. I want to be charitable. I want to be happy with where I live, with who, I'm, who I have in my life. It's just the basic needs. How I get there, what it ends up being. We'll see. So what are you studying in school now? I'm double majoring in business and digital music production. All right. Yeah. That sounds right on point for it's, what you're imagining. Exactly. Years down the road. Right, it's very on point, and I, and I think it, it, th those two being my double majors helped me out a lot because I I like being like strategic and having like being able to do like, the, the kind of mind stuff like the left brain right brain thing like Ron was talking about like <laughs> maybe not to that extent but, <laughs> but but you know I, I like having that on the one hand but also having the creative outlet that is music. Um, and with the digital music production major, it's not as much like classical music of like oh like this and that with jazz or Mozart, which is still important to learn. Um, but it's way more focused on like audio recording and like more of how to navigate the modern music landscape. So I like it a lot. So what is navigating the modern music landscape? The industry is constantly changing too. Um, 
and a lot more than it has. <sighs> Did you guys catch that? Did no, you but you know, <laughs> YouTube right now is doing an uh, honorarium to the billion view videos. Oh, are they? Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's all pretty much music videos. Right, music has an impact. And it is interesting to see like the artists who are up in that realm yeah who get the billion views and, and the impact that those artists have on the world is yeah. pretty crazy like, like katie perry has three or four videos wow yeah crazy. I did, katie perry of all people i wouldn't have expected it but right that's what i was right yeah but she's on the author career when you think about it I yeah mean, that's what it, it kind of put to me that perspective because she had that film come out there's yeah like she's had this vibe for a long time that I didn't pay too much attention to. Like, I like yeah. her music. Yeah, she's like a pop star. But, it's, yeah. but like, she's, she's done a lot. She's had that movie. She's a judge on American Idol now. She, like, does all this crazy stuff. And right, I was like, right. she's a mom. She is, you know, right. like, she, there's, there's all these different aspects of her and what she puts out, people listen to. Yeah. Um, but I think the cycle of rotation is changing a lot in the music industry. You know, like, clearly we've changed formats now from, like, going from CDs or anything right. to streaming and streaming right. was a huge evolution in music it changed the way that artists are paid and monetized it changed the way royalties work for artists it changed musicians relationships with the record labels it, it took the power away a bit but it kind of re-established what a label is looking for in an artist so like right. overall the industry has changed a lot in the 10 year in the last 10 years and with tiktok and social media it's only going to change even more so that's what i like about this current major i'm taking is like I'm learning about the production, which will be used in real time, and I'm also learning about the business aspect of music and how that industry works, how it's tough, and how you got to like really fend for yourself because it's all about capitalizing on creativity, and that's a very difficult thing to do. <sighs> what do you love about the friends you have up here? Up here, I love my and friends. Yeah, like you know, you guys are tight. From Very what tight. I see. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what I love most about us. We're family. Like, I I come from like, I have like a good amount of family on both sides, but I've never lived near them. You know, I lived in New Mexico and California for most of my life, and my closest family members are in uh, New York City. And the last time I even went up to New York City was when I was 11. So I haven't seen that my dad's side in 10 years. I met my mom's side and only a few of those members for the first time when I was. A senior in high school so for me family has very much been just what's around me and so that's my parents a lot um, you know I have a very close relationship with them but friends for me kind of count as family once it gets to a certain point and the ones that are up here that that like that is family for me so have you found that you've been able to create new family down in LA it's getting there cool. I, I don't want to force anything and call some family that like may not be in a few years like these people like that I hang out with up here, like I know, like at least my goal is to be in their lives in some capacity forever, and vice versa. You know, like like those relationships mean a lot to me. But like in terms of the people down there, I have very good friends, and I'm very grateful for them, and I've made great memories in the last year with them. Um, but I, th I think I, I, it needs more time to reclassify that. But I have my new my newfound groove there for sure. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's fun. That's fun, and it's it's crazy too because you know. Whittier is only a six hour drive from up here. So I, most of my Whittier friends have met <laughs> most of my Marin friends. <laughs> Excuse the interruption. Yeah. <laughs> um, but most of them met each other now. So it's, it's, it's been a very, I've seen like the mix of the two worlds and both sides approve of each other. So it's always a good sign in my head. Have the two mixed? Like have, yeah. Yeah. Because, um, Four or five of our friends from Whittier came up for winter break last year for like a whole week. And not that a lot of us were here, but Jonah met them, Brady met them, a good, a good few of us. So like that was cool. Um, and then a bunch of us, like 12 of us from Whittier, got a house in Daly City for spring break. So a bunch of people who are up here met them too, again. Um, and every time it's been great. So. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Maybe you're just a good conduit for our good vibes. That's what I try to be. I don't know. Hopefully that, that translates. But Good vibes only, everybody. <laughs> yeah. I think an important part to that, too, is just, like, knowing when and when to step in or out of things. You know what I mean? Like, to a certain extent, like, I was very, like, I, I can experience FOMO a lot. So, like, when I'm not up here the entire summer, I can get FOMO for sure. Um, What's FOMO? Fear of missing out. Okay. Um, but... 
I definitely have learned when to step in and out of that too. You know what I mean? Um, so like I, you know, I think me like a few years ago have been very upset to only have been up in Marin for three weeks for the summer. So I'm like, there's a whole this summer I'm missing out hanging out with my friends and stuff. Like what the hell? But I think now I'm like at a point where I'm like, oh, well that's three great weeks I get to have with people and the rest of the time I get to work on me or do whatever I want to do in Redondo, you know? Right. That's kind of like going with the flow. Yeah, is exactly. That, the flow is three weeks up here and the rest down there. Exactly. And, you know, this summer, I've had a great summer up here and not up here. You know what I mean? I, I've traveled a lot this summer, too, so that's been a great thing. Yeah, that's nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that COVID, everyone knows. I know. <laughs> Call me super spreader. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a joke. Calm Get off his down. back. <laughs> Don't cancel me, I swear. Um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Is there anything that keeps you awake? Like, is there a, is there anything that's like a nightmare in your life right now? I'm very blessed to say no. Awesome. There's been times in my life where all I can do is stay up and think, and there's nothing in particular. It's just constants or events that happen at the time that really make me twist and turn. Money used to be a huge thing for me about that. I've never been the most well off. Um, I used to think I was, and then that illusion for me shattered, and that was a huge wake-up call in that sense. Um, and in general, just like, you know, the, 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 the kind of physical things have definitely like, affected me in the past, but like at this point in my life, no. Not, nothing nothing gets awesome. to me like that. Yeah. Is there anything that you just have like this electric, positive vibe about? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I would say music in that sense. Yeah. That's the one constant that I do, but I love nature. I've I've learned to love getting to know people. <laughs> I used to hate that stuff. <laughs> I was not the biggest fan of like mingling and stuff like that, being extroverted. But I very much enjoy that process now. Right on. Um, yeah. So. Do you think that's part of the, an outcome of part of the work you've been doing over the past few years? Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. You know, like I, I look at myself now and I don't even recognize who I was like even three years ago, or definitely five years ago. Which which is fair. I was like fifteen, but that's a different like you know that this is where you're supposed to grow the most. I feel like or where you're allowed to grow the most. Um, but in general, even like regardless of that, like just in terms of mental health and anxiety and like m- my, my, myself and moving in the world, 100% growth across. And I'm very proud of it. Yeah, you should be. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to touch upon? That I'm trying to think. I feel like we've got some pretty good stuff here. <laughs> like there was like a lot of bases that were covered. I wasn't expecting all that. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I don't know, I'm going to ask, I'm, I'm ask that question back to you. Anything that keeps you up in that? No. Okay. I'd say that I, um, dark areas are romance. Like, mm-hmm. I think the um, in me, yeah. the relationship with Jonah's mom, Mm-hmm. my ex yeah. there's an element of still healing for me to do yeah. and what I love mm-hmm. like part of the work I've done the past few years is let's say I'm fucking angry right now and in my mind is this tape like fucking Jacob you know he was five minutes late and God right. has nothing to do with you Right. that anger's in me mm-hmm. that's my emotion mm-hmm so to breathe into, like you were saying um, earlier about how you were grinding on that song, yeah. you took a breath and you're like, all right, wait a minute, like, I'm, you know, this is going on, okay. It's the same thing, like, to be able to breathe and go like, all right, I'm fucking angry. This is like, side swipe, you know, like what's really going on? Mm-hmm. Why am I angry? Mm-hmm. What thought process is being challenged? And even individuals in my life where I'm challenged by them. Right. In my best self, I welcome it because it's bringing up my shadow. It's bringing up the parts of me I want to heal. Right, exactly. It's, it's forcing me to, to, to interact with it. And right and kind of challenge yourself on that. Right, and the Important. key is to not dump it on someone else. Mm-hmm. Projection. To mm-hmm. right to hold it as my own, and mm-hmm. even so, the whole romantic thing. Because also, yeah. there's um, a person who just contacted me a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and we used to date in my twenties, mm-hmm. and um, 
and like talking with her, I was totally jacked. And the next day, I had all this energy. I was like, what the hell? Right, what's going on? Right, yeah. and there's this, so, like part of me, is like I want to tap into that and not have it hinged on something outside of myself. Because mm -hmm. it's there, right? It's there in you. Right, right. right. But then there's that whole romantic thing of another and the partnership. And, and how that can elevate it for yourself. And right. I think in romance, there's like an important distinction between like dependence in a relationship and interdependence. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So, because by interdependence, I think what you're saying mm -hmm. is the partnership. Yeah. Yeah. To the point where you're not depending. Like, I feel like, look, I haven't had like a, like a serious relationship with that ever. Um, but I've been around my friends enough and like I do think about enough to like where I think in a relationship there's the dependence where like it becomes unhealthy where like you can't be without that person or like you can't imagine life your life without them which of course you don't want to imagine your life without them but like there's a point where like you can't fully act on your own anymore it, and, and I think the difference between dependence and interpen interdependence is you don't think of it as two halves making a whole but as two holes making a better whole and bettering yeah. each other through it. And like the point where like you can completely function without each other. You can even spend maybe a few weeks without each other and be fine, but still miss each other and still want to work together and, and move forward in life together. And for me, I find that challenging right mm -hmm. now yeah. because I so want to, um, what, what's the word I'm working for? Like mesh mm -hmm. with someone. Right. But what you just said, I reckon, like, there's an unhealthy aspect to that. Yeah, and it's just I think that we were talking about earlier, like building boundaries in relationships in that sense. Mm -hmm. And like I think every relationship, no matter how close you are, th there's there's your own personal boundaries that, that should play a part in that. But I think part well, I think part of with romantic relationship yeah. is that it is going to bring up the challenge and yeah. a very peak experience. Like I imagine, yeah. if you spoke with your parents. Mm -hmm that they would tell you, yeah, there's been some times that were bloody hell. Oh yeah, I've seen them, you know what okay. I mean? Like, it's, and, and I think it's different because like, I can't speak for it for myself in that sense, you know what I mean? I had an experience when I was producing Baja, Yeah. that um, we were down in Loretta, which yeah. is midway down Baja, Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. A flight comes in once a week. Wow. We okay. had just landed. I had no idea where we, I was going to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, there was a whole bunch of shit going on. I wanted to quit. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an option. There was nowhere for me to go. Right. That option's off the table. Wow. So then I was like, okay, so now what? Mm -hmm. I think if in like marriage and partnership, if that is the way that both people are in it, like divorce isn't an option. Yeah. So now what? Mm, so divorce is an option now. Because I think people find the easy way out in that. You know, right. Like the it's, divorce rate in the U.S. is 50% and California is 70%. Which is huge. That's fucking huge. <laughs> did right? not know that. Right. Really? It's insane. Wow. It's like, I'm sure it's only gone up more. That, that's for like from like seven years ago. Wow. wow. Yeah. Which is, which is crazy. But also at the same time, I don't know. I, for me, marriage is not an important thing. Like I don't need to get married to the person I love. Because I think what marriage should be for a lot of people in that sense is it's taking it from like a relationship to like an institute an institute an institute and and I, and I respect that aspect of marriage um, i understand it's like for like there's like marriage can be like for financial reasons too and right. stuff and all that and prenups and whatever right. but um in terms of just like the relationship itself like it, it becomes an institution where you guys want to work through life together and that is a commitment you make and that commitment is what i find important about it right. and if you want to step out of that commitment that easy maybe it's not as much of a commitment as you thought Exactly. And it's just the idea of the commitment that you liked. Right. And then I think actually walking and acting through that is a whole other process that nobody knows how to do. And that's okay. But, like, part of that is accepting the hardest challenges with it. Yeah, this is a trick. Because that just brings up part of, like, with everything in life, if you take the easy option out, mm -hmm. which isn't supporting your main goal. And, again, for me, like, physical working out. Yeah. Um, I'm slacking on it right mm, now. Right. And part of it is that like slipping back and oh, I just want to lie. Chill. The comfort. The yes. comfort. But you gotta you gotta find comfort in the discomfort. Like I used to hate working out. Like in my childhood, I was like, 
never could never be me but now I look at, my, look at myself and like in like the end of high school and beginning of college especially I was like in a gym rat era where and I, and I still like do go to the gym like six times a week and stuff if I can like I, I'm very consistent with it but it's because I found comfort in that discomfort of going to the gym yeah. and now I like pushing myself in that aspect you know what I mean yeah so, yeah God damn it, Jacob. God damn it, Greg. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, so what do you wish for your friends? For my friends? Yeah. Just for them to be happy with where they're at, wherever that may be for themselves. Whether they're in Boulder or here or across the country or Tucson or wherever the fuck they are. Like, just have fun and make it for yourself, you know? Just, I don't know. I, I, I understand people with their goals, and, like, we don't always reach our goals which I think is a very scary thing. But regardless of that, to just be content in the present with where you are, just, that's what people deserve. What do you think is scary about not reaching a goal? Because we put so much weight in ourselves and we, we put ourselves into those goals. Like for example, like if, if I don't end up becoming like really successful in my music career, that'd be a scary thing for myself. And, and that's something that I, I will have to come to terms with if that happens, which I'm hoping it never does. <laughs> so you're looking at 40-year-old Jacob, Jacob in a 7-Eleven yeah, behind the if, counter. If, 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 if I'm at the 7-Eleven right down the street and I'm, and I'm there singing with a banjo or something, thinking this is peak music career for me right now. And, and that's where I'm at. That would be like, sad. That would <laughs> suck. <laughs> Shit. But, you know, I would have to look at it and just be happy with where I'm at the present. I'm outside of a great store that has so many things. And I have a banjo in my hand and I'm singing. And if that's making me happy, that's making me happy. Of course, that's not where I want to end up being. I wouldn't want any of my friends to end up there either. But I have to find happiness in that presence. And I think the spark of life is where that's not the end all. Like being in a mindset where that's not the end all. Like, so what could you do? Like maybe you're going to be a vagabond, you know, like living out of a van and you tro- go through the country playing music and hanging out with people. And see, if that happens, I'll see that as successful because I'm yeah. doing it and I'm happy. I'm getting these exactly. great experiences. And, like, and that's the thing. That, that's the thing about change, too. The, like, not to bring everything back to that, but the only consistent thing is change. So go with it and have fun with whatever that may bring to you, whatever goals may come out of that. Your goal can be completed in ways that you don't think could be. You know, like if my goal is to be successful in music... That's generic. How can I be successful in music? There's so many ways. Yeah. So. So it kind of like sounds like we're both in agreement that happiness is a choice. It's absolutely a choice, and and I and I, and I think it's it's hard to see it that way a lot of times. You know, like if if I was way more mentally ill right now than I am, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be on my high horse saying this shit as comfortably as I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't. I think it's very hard to when you're in that space. The happiness. To an extent, is a choice. That's all. Certainly. Yeah. We're done. All right. Well, cheers. Cheers to that. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs>